Hello guys and welcome to this week's episode of You've Got Issues. I'm your host Idia Aysian and this is the show where you send in your questions and with the help of my lovely guests we give you tips and advice. Remember, we're not experts but a problem shared is indeed a problem halved. Today we're going to be talking about everything beauty and how to start or build your beauty business and empire. And I have with me award-winning makeup artist and the CEO of Tenny Coco Studios, Teniola Kasham. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Welcome, welcome, thank welcome. You. And I also have with me the gorgeous lifestyle and beauty YouTuber, Dima Ume. Welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you doing? Okay, so are you guys ready to help me solve some tough beauty Yay. questions? Okay, so let's take our first question for the day. Let's hear it from the board. I want to go into the beauty industry, but I feel it is a saturated market and it will be difficult to go in. As an upcoming artist and beauty vlogger, what would you advise I do to stay relevant? Okay, so I think it's a very important question because I've thought about it too so many times. I've always wanted, I've always been interested in like lifestyle videos, beauty, etc. But I'm like, first of all, I don't really know a lot about, you know, coaching other people on beauty. I just wanted to do stuff that I'm interested in, stuff that works for me. And then I'm always worried, like, there's so many people out there that are doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So how do you stand out? How do you stay relevant? And I want to start with you, Dima. Okay. Um, so I'm going to be just be handling, talking about um, the social media aspect of it purely because that's where I'm immersed, irrespective of the fact that yeah. I'm making money off of it. So the thing I'll just say to anyone who is looking to start is to try as much as possible to be consistent. Consistency, it matters a lot. That was how mm. I... I just got myself out there, you know, don't look at the stats on your first video and be like, oh my God, this is crap, I'm so... Because I see people tell me that all the time, I did this video and it didn't do well, I'm like, and you stopped? Just keep doing it and try and follow trends, see what is happening, because that helps a lot. Your videos, yeah. yeah with videos. For example, I just did a, a, a video recently um, talking about the powder before foundation technique. It's something that's kind of trending on YouTube just to get your foundation last longer. Mm -hmm. Try to tap into that because when there's something in trend, people come searching for it and then they, they end up seeing you and then you end up just getting all these people that at the end of the day, you wouldn't have attracted with your regular videos, you know? So try and be consistent and be yourself. And the reason why I really, really believe that it's important that you be yourself is that the camera can pick up when you're uncomfortable. The camera can pick up when you're trying to force things. So it's really, really important because YouTube, I feel like, it's all about being relatable. More, yeah. than, more than even talent, more than your techniques. Mm -hmm. It's more about people being able to relate to you. I remember when I was starting, I was like, this Nigerian girl, we don't understand my slangs, we don't understand my sense of humor, you know? But then you would see that a lot of people come from all these different backgrounds and they are able to relate. We can't all be the same. So you're giving them this extra something alongside this. They like it. So be yourself. Don't try to force things. It will help you a lot. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Dima. And Tenny, I know that you have a business in this, so um, can you tell us more on that side of how to get started and how to stay relevant? Because yeah, if you pick up on like the trends that everybody's mm -hmm. doing, how do you how do you, how stand, do you stand out, out? and how do you mm -hmm. get people to constantly tap into what you're doing? Okay, so um, for me, I would say like talent first of all is very important, and you know you having passion for what you do because once you love what you do then you know that kind you know it just helps okay so another thing is you know you get out of your comfort zone and you know trying to do what you're not used to like if for instance now there's you know there's a look you kind of shy away from like me for instance like i shy away from bold looks and stuff but you know just to put yourself out there and to kind of grab the attention of your audience just try to get out of your comfort zone then in terms of you know making money off it you can also there are also like side things you can add like in terms of like you know you can sell makeup you can you know do master classes you know you just get out of your comfort zone try to be different and you know you don't necessarily have to follow like the crowd and do what everyone else is doing you can you can stick to trend and not necessarily you know be lost in the crowd so yeah okay well um i think obviously dima and tenny have said a lot of very interesting and important facts you know mm -hmm. Dima said that you should make sure that you are consistent and I think that really really helps to stay yes. relevant because if you yes. post once a month I mean come on come like on. the competition is going to swallow you up yeah. and then after a while people sort of like simmer down and they're not yeah. checking as much because they've checked a few times and you weren't 
posting. posting yeah. And then I think also getting out of your comfort zone is very important as well. But one thing I would like to add is I also think that thinking out of the box exactly. is very important in staying yeah. relevant because there's somebody that started the videos with the powder first before the foundation, foundation technique. So why not be that first person, person. you know, to do something that people haven't seen before? before like you can exactly. just be like, oh, a new method of strobing or a new, I don't know, something, <laughs> you know, something that is also like DIY, cost effective, stuff like that. People mm -hmm. like to see things like that because there's a lot of things that people want to do, but they also cannot afford, afford to do. Afford. So, you know, just thinking outside the box and, yeah. Um, Dima, you had something else yeah. to say? When it comes to, you know, techniques that actually help with wear and stuff like that, people yeah. don't really mind. But then the thing I would say about thinking outside the box is to just be really, really careful from no, experience course, course. because I feel like us here in this part of, generally I feel like women of color, we, are, we tend to be a lot more conservative with the things we, we try to do. Yeah. So you might be seeing there's something that will, some, you know, white, white women are like pushing is this technique. For example, there was, there was this soap brows technique that came out one time and, you know, people were doing it on YouTube and then it was, into, I, I, I first saw a white YouTuber do it and, but then we can be very, very loud that if you, there are things that are so unconventional that you try it and then it ends up putting people off. Yeah. Instead of them going, yeah, like, wow, it's too hard, yeah, it's this too, is it's, this is interesting, it's dramatic. and then some of them will be like, this is too much, this is mm. you being too extra, irrespective of the fact that it's not really you. So I feel like women of color, we tend to be very, very conservative when we are we try to push new things. I would say if you're trying to, but once you try it first, are you gonna try it the day that you're recording? Yeah, you try the day you're recording, and then it, it works for you. But then yeah, you're coming to show it to them. When you show it to them, they'll be like, ha, ah, this one is you, Dima. This is being too extra. People will just come under there and be thing all kinds of random things that don't even have anything to do with, <laughs> to do with the video, with the video. And, <laughs> but and that's the life of youtube yeah, <laughs> yeah and i think that the, with the comment section on youtube is like a competition because the more dramatic or ridiculous the comment is the more likes it will get and then it's like they are trying to get themselves seen so you know and also you also have to be really confident in yourself yeah because you know honestly don't not, look for hmm. people to validate you but exactly yeah, you do not it's, yeah. it, I think that the more engagement that you get online, the better. The better. Right? Just, um, put as just much know stuff what you're actually there. doing before mm -hmm. you post. post. And post something that, I mean, I, I think sometimes there are things that we start and people are not ready for. So just because you get Ex a backlash, exactly. that doesn't, doesn't, mean, exactly doesn't mean that it's not going to eventually catch, catch on. on. So, yeah, um, like Tenny had mentioned earlier, be passionate about what you're doing, be confident. Very and important. you know, exactly. So your skin but, should also be thick enough so that I when mean, that first backlash comes, come, you don't need to go hide somewhere hide and be somewhere. like, oh, they all hate me. No, not really. It's not about it's just, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, guys, so let's take our second question for the day. Let's hear it from the board. Please, can you suggest eye makeup tips for someone with hooded eyes? My eyeliners and eyeshadows never show on my eyes. Okay, so I'm going to throw this question to Tenny first because I think I have hooded eyes though. Like you can't see because of the makeup, but my eyes are very, okay, you know, a little so, bit, Yeah, a, a little. little okay, so, so I think, it, it, well, not I think, I know that it helps if you put your eyeshadow primer basically like above where your lids are. Put not, it slightly, so not on the actual lid? No, they're just slightly above. So that way, you know, it creates an illusion of, you know, fuller and, mm. you know, bigger looking eyes. So another important tip is to use eyeshadow primers that do not smudge. If you have hooded eyes, it's very important that you use an eyeshadow primer. And you need one that does not and will not smudge. So you can try Urban Decay um, eyeshadow primer portion. That really, really works. So. Okay. Dima. Okay, um, when it comes to this, I, my eyes are not really hooded, but then... What I have learned over the years and just seen from experience to tell people who have really hooded eyes is one. One tip I know that really works is just like Tenny said, try and create lid space outside of what you already have. Mm -hmm. So try to go past where your actual lid is when it comes to application. Let's say you're a makeup artist, especially let's say you're working on someone who has hooded eyes. Mm -hmm. Pulling up the actual, because at the end of the day, the hood is just like, ex, it's just extra flesh in that extra area. Skin, so yeah. to get into the, 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 crease, the, the crease, you just pull, pull it up a little bit while you're applying. applying secondly use a very good primer like she said and then third aside from creating like you know extra lid space i do know people who actually work with what they have like the actual lid space that they have i know youtubers that i follow like alisa ashley for example these are people that have hooded eyes and they are just working it they're not trying to like create it's extra yeah they are mm -hmm. just trying to work with what they have so one advice i would really give especially for someone who applies makeup on themselves is try and watch videos by youtubers or just 
bloggers who have the same features as you do. It helps you figure out how to work with your own features. So. Exactly. Okay, yeah. well, I have a question. What is this um, technique where you use the white pencil inside of the eyes to sort of make the eyes look bigger? Does that help with hooded eyes? No, I, I think that that's more just to create the yeah. illusion that you have bigger, bigger eyes. eyes. Okay, yeah. so that doesn't help okay, if your eyes are hooded. hooded. Yeah. No, it's just... Okay. And I think a cut crease actually works for hooded eyes. You do a cut crease. Yeah, you do a cut crease outside. Yeah. Just uh, what, increase what is the a lid. What? Basically, cuts like cut crease. So okay, basically, cut, cutting create a very crease. sharp crease. So okay, normally, okay, okay. you know, with normal crease colors, like the way my eyes are now, it's you try to blend. You into. blend everything out to soften it and deepen mm. it. But with a cut crease, you're creating a very sharp illusion. Line. Just ah. a very sharp line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. got it. Okay. So you've <laughs> yeah. heard from our guests. Um, I'm not a makeup expert, but um, you've heard from our guests. It's very important to use a good primer to possibly pull up your eyelid mm -hmm. so that you can get into the wrinkled parts of your eye. Yeah. Guys, we have to take a quick break now. Don't forget that you can send in your questions to YGI at myspice.tv and you can also hashtag YGI on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. More questions on BBT. We'll be back after the break, so don't go anywhere. Hello guys and welcome back to You've Got Issues. I'm still here talking all things beauty and starting a beauty business with Tenny and Dima. And now we're about to take our third question for the day, so let's hear it from the board. How can I prevent myself from having fine lines after highlighting and setting my under eye concealer? Okay, so this question is very interesting because, because I don't do my makeup, I don't, I'm not really good with makeup, but I have witnessed somebody or people trying to do my makeup and then it's sort of like, um, creases, creases out creases or out. whatever after the makeup is done already so how can you prevent this problem and I'm gonna start with you Dima okay with the way the question was structured um, I, I want to assume that this person is referring to two different things yep. so first of all like they're just like normal wrinkles that we have under you have it I have it so they're just little creases that you have underneath your immediate eye area so one thing I'd say when it comes to just getting your foundation and your application to last as much as possible is don't use too much product in that area the more concealer you pack because this is the, way, the place where concealer normally goes so the more concealer you apply in this area the probability that it's going to crease it increases mm -hmm. you know it's going to it's, it's going to crease irrespective sometimes like, even when it sets it will still crease so one good way to get around that is to not apply too much at once mm. and then let's say the person was referring to lines that you probably get after you've set the faces the thing is that really with a lot of people the, the skin we have under our immediate eye area is the most delicate skin on yeah. that, in our face mm -hmm. there is no bone under that area and in most cases when you see people who have oily skin the rest of their face is oily but then for me especially the rest of my face is oily but then my immediate on the eye area i have normal to dry skin there mm -hmm. so you know that you don't treat this area the way you treat the rest, the rest of, of your, your face, face. so mm -hmm. i can go on and pack this much powder on my face to prevent oil but then when you do it here the effect is it's not going to be the same because this place is drier and it will look dry and wrinkly if you do too much mm -hmm. in that area so mm -hmm. don't like for example if you watch my videos you see i don't bake like you know how people bake and then they go and apply in their makeup i don't do that that's too much powder for me so i just set that area lightly with powder and that's also don't use too much powder and don't use too much concealer Okay, Tani, what would you advise the person to do? Okay, so for me, I would say you should probably use a really good setting powder. Mm -hmm. You could try um, Laura Mercier, you could try Sasha Cosmetics. Those really would really help to stop the creasing underneath your eyes. Okay, mm -hmm. well, thank you guys so much. I hope our guests have been able to help you with that problem a little. I had the same problem, so I don't really have any tips for you, but the quality of the powder that you use is very, very important. And then also, if you're baking, just know what works for you. Baking might not be for you yeah. and also the quality of the products that you use yes. is very important. We're going to take our next question for the day, so let's hear it from the board. Is it advisable for me to quit my day job and start my beauty business as a makeup artist? If not, is there a recipe for creating a beauty brand that is poised with immediate success and sustainable long-term growth? I would suggest that, you know, if you, you you shouldn't quit your job almost immediately. You could start, you know, doing maybe home calls, you know, during the weekends and you know, see how it goes from there because you know it doesn't happen overnight you can't you can't just start today and you think you would at attain success immediately no it's years and years and years of you know building something hard big, work or, you know building hard work and you know building a brand that people would want to be associated with so i i suggest that you still keep your job but you can you know just start by like i said earlier home calls here and there and see how 
you can go from there then when the time is right you can now yeah quit your job yeah Dima. okay for me with this since like i'm not really into artistry it's more of the you know social media vlogging bit of it i'll just say like she said you have to see that there is a need for you to quit your job for example when i started making videos i was doing it alongside work i was doing my youth service at the time however everything started growing you have to number one you have to be very passionate about this don't go don't go into any of these things now thinking it's because of money but if, if you go into it for money purely it's just not you have to be very very passionate about it number two you have to see that people are watching your videos people are actually coming audience. back to watch it you have an audience exactly and then the, the talent is there as well you have to take mm -hmm. times where you step back yeah. look at what you're doing is it being successful how much have you grown over a certain period of time exactly because the truth is that you're actually going to grow and get to a point where it is unavoidable that you have to focus you have on to that. yeah you, you, you will get to a point where you've grown so much that you can't actually do this thing alongside a day job anymore yes. but then know that you've gotten to that point yeah. first and then two for someone into it have you been contacted by brands have you been have you gotten any kind of endorsements because these are the potential sources of like revenue income for you and if you've not even gotten one or two or three of them people approach you saying would like you to do this for us and then we will pay you don't just stop don't just stop your just work. keep doing it just keep side. doing it yeah well yeah. so i think what point. both of you have said is very very important mm -hmm. um i i think that for instance if you're trying to be a makeup it depends on the kind of beauty, beauty business you're yeah, starting yeah. that's yeah. the first thing i'll mm -hmm. tell you so are you trying to be a makeup artist are you trying to sell a product are you trying to be a youtuber sure. so that you can represent um Brands. critique other people's products, products. Mm -hmm. right for instance because you may not even necessarily be getting huge endorsements mm -hmm. but some people may just be paying you here and there too of course too. it's never huge YouTube yeah, yeah. Endorsements paying you are here and there too yeah. you know showcase products and sort of rate those products the first thing i'll say when it comes to being a makeup artist is you cannot underestimate the power of social media so there's a lot of people here that i know their work we were seeing it online and we were like wow do you understand because they first probably started small with their loyal with their with people that they knew and then those pictures went out online they saw the amount of people that were gravitating towards them because of the work that had been produced so first focus on the work that you're doing Talent. focus on being consistent and really really good at it before you now think about quitting your, your job. job if you're not very busy or invested in what you're doing why would you want to just rely on 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 an income stream that isn't even there yet or isn't even big yet or hasn't grown yet right so there's that angle of first getting feedback that people genuinely are Want interested you. exactly not that you're going around begging people to watch your videos, videos or you're or begging, them phase where you're begging people to, to do makeup, makeup with you and this is really important this feedback being yeah. open to it don't be too sensitive when it comes to your work i'll tell you even you should be your biggest critic exactly. as a person exactly. that's why i said if you even do i can make videos for one month two months you step back right now i'm taking a mini break yeah look at what you've done so far don't be too sensitive even when people leave comments on that you Everybody's not trying to attack you. Some people genuinely mean you well. It might just be with the way they've just, but don't be too sensitive when it comes to your work. And yeah. it's really, really true what she said. You have to accept feedback and work with what you've, you've been given. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, um, that's all I have to say. I think um, what the guest said about having that audience first is the most important factor. And that audience is even what is going to make your business sustainable yeah. in the long term. So yeah. if you don't have an audience, if you did make up for one person, the person didn't come back, you didn't make up for another person. Another person. So clearly there's probably something that you need to you change to work on. better. You have yeah. to have your own following online. You have to have your own following, loyal customers in person before you get to a point where you think of quitting your job. Guys, we have to take a quick break. Don't forget that you can leave your comments online by hashtagging YGI or emailing YGI at myspice.tv. Don't go anywhere. Hello guys and welcome back to You've Got Issues. I'm still here talking all things beauty with Tenny and Dima. So we're about to take our last question for the day. Let's hear it from the void. There has been a whole craze with microblading in the cosmetic industry. I want to know how hygienic and safe this method is. Okay, so wow, this is a very interesting question because a lot of people are doing this microblading micro thing right now and it's a huge craze and I'm interested in doing it next week so I kind of want to know the answer oh, to this okay. question. So starting mm -hmm. with you, Tani. For me, I think it's really safe and you know, the most important thing for me is you know, to go to a beautician that is registered, just don't go to any quack that would stamp one you know, ridiculous thing on your face. For people who do not have eyebrows, I think it's something that you can definitely try. Okay, but I want to know, so why wouldn't you do it? Because my eyebrows are 
perfectly. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. <laughs> okay, so Dima. I have very sparse eyebrows and you know honestly it's, it's not something that like I'll pro I probably see myself considering it in the future however since this whole question is centered on hygiene one thing I'll just say is just take the necessary precautions all the precautions that you will take for example when you're going to a barber to get your hair cut any because it, it, it involves sterilizing equipment make yeah, sure that the course. person that you're dealing with because with the microblading it does leave very very tiny cuts not not cuts that will leave scars, but yes. then the probability it will you will get very tiny cuts. Yeah, because you are sore for a few yeah. days. And yeah. it's a very, very tiny needle. So just just take the necessary precautions. Make sure that the person that you're going to sterilizes their stuff. It's really important. So yeah. yeah. Okay, well for me, I'm definitely gonna try microblading. One, because my BFF and my cousin just started um, the business. Oh, okay. And it took her it has taken her months, weeks. Certificate upon certificate, certificate of upon training, training. Yeah. you know, to do it. And I think that those are the processes that you need to, to go through it's very comforting. before you yeah. can say mm -hmm. you're mm -hmm. going to start it. You exactly. actually apparently can't just wake up and say you do lashes or this or that. You can't. You no, have you to can't. go through a lot of trainings. A lot. Of, you have to get a lot of certificates to be able to get it done. So for me, seeing how hard she has worked and how much she has put into it, I don't mm -hmm. think she's about to go and now, you know, give somebody some kind of huge injury or whatever. infection mm -hmm. exactly on their eye. Yeah. So for me, I think, you know, I think it's pretty safe, it's but safe. just go to somebody that you trust, exactly. you know, and if you don't know anybody, you don't trust anybody, check out the check reviews out online. online yeah. And if you're not satisfied with that, then you don't have to microblade. You can, you can go for a consultation first to meet with the... Yeah. Exactly. Okay, well, that's all that we have for today. Thank you so much to Tenny and Dima for being here. It's been so amazing. And thank you to Bo Concept for this lovely, lovely, lovely location. And to you guys back home for watching. You guys are stars. We will be here same time and same place next week on You've Got Issues, so you better tune in.